Hey, what's up? John Sanmez here from simpleprogrammer.com and I, I'm super excited today. I know I say this all the time, but it, it's just it's awesome to interview awesome people, right? I mean, this is this is the cool thing I get to do. I get to like meet so many people on, on this YouTube channel that like that I've seen either on TV or I've read their books and, and that it's it's just awesome, right? So so that's why you should start your own YouTube channel. But uh, I'm really excited today because I am going to be talking with uh, someone who I've been following for a long time. I remember the first time I saw uh, saw this gentleman, I saw him on on Shark Tank, and and I, and you know if you're on YouTube, you you, you have certainly heard of of uh, of Alpha M and Aaron Marino, who is is just an awesome guy, really good as far as style for for those of you men out there, right? You know you you know I've been talking about. How to get the ladies as a programmer, and uh, I, I think uh, I think Al Alpha M is is really a, a good source for for that information and just just general style for guys. So so w welcome, Aaron, and, and thanks for coming on. John, thank you so much for having me. And and for the guys that are watching, this is a long time coming. We've been trying to connect to do this for like a month now, and uh, it's finally here. I'm so excited, John. You're killing it. And I've been binge watching your videos and you're just doing such a great job. So congratulations to you and keep doing the amazing work. So thank you so much for having me. This is incredible. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We've been trying to connect and uh, it's, 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 it's been fun, but you know, it's, it's busy. The other thing I, I didn't mention really about Aaron, I mean, I, I talked about, about the shark tank, but I mean, he is, he's a hell of an entrepreneur. So like, yeah, I've been following your stuff on the, the teach Hanley, the, the new line that you're putting out and, and your, the blog on there, which is pretty awesome. Good content for you guys. Actually, I'll put a link to his, his new channel, the, the blog channel for that, uh, for the teach Hanley, because that it, it's got a lot of good entrepreneurial advice. I think yeah, so. You know it's funny that the teach Hanley for those of you out there who don't know, um, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a YouTuber, but the YouTube has sort of allowed me to try a few different things. Um, I was on shark tank once for an information product that was a total disaster. It bombed. And then, you know, because I'm such a, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a marketer and that's, yeah. that's sort of what I do. And so, you know, for me, shark tank was all about exposure. And so I, I started a hair product company called Pete and Pedro. I was a little, I'm having a bad hair day, but don't judge my product on my hair today. Um, anyway, so I went back and, and it was awesome, great time. But um, another business that, that I started as a result is, or not as a result of that, but, but a skincare company. I was very frustrated with the, the skincare market out there for guys. It, it seemed like there was just too many companies that were treating us like women. They were, you know, so many products, it was super expensive. And I thought there has to be a better way. Sort of that old, that old adage. And um, I teamed up with two guys plus a chemist and, and we created this, this, this system, a skincare system called Tiege Hanley. Well, when we were getting ready to do that, what I sort of came up with the idea of, it would probably be interesting to actually talk about us and what we're going through in terms of starting a business and building the brand Tiege Hanley. And so for like 82, 83 weeks now, every week I put out like a 20 minute vlog, just talking about something that we're dealing with at the time, because yeah. there's definitely been a steep learning curve and there's definitely been a lot of road bumps that we've sort of stumbled with because none of us have, have started a skincare company before. So it's, it's very therapeutic for me just because I love talking about business. And you can obviously see, I also, like talking and so it's a, it's it's a perfect it's a perfect option for or opportunity for me sort of just to dump stuff out there and hopefully a few people get some value out of it so thank you yeah yeah it, it makes a lot of sense i think i mean a lot of guys don't don't even think about skincare like I, like i i know the routine because my wife is so into it but you know i i wash my face every morning and then i put on the toner right and then and before i go to bed i put on the toner and i and i do the the more and i do moisturizer right but but I think it's like it's hard to find. Like I was searching, I was searching when I was tr trying to figure it out at first. I was like, there's nothing good. Like I just give me a damn done for you solution. Like just tell me what to do yeah. and let me do it. Instead, it's like oh you know all these these pieces and all these products and you're like no I just want to you know. So I like that idea of just a done for you. Okay, this is if you do this, you'll have good skin. <laughs> yep. You know? Well, you have incredible skin, and you're in insane shape. <laughs> so <Thank> you. <laughs> you you understand the value of you know of working out and taking care of yourself, and the fact that you know it doesn't just start stop with you know the biceps and 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 the chest and and looking good with your shirt off. It's also you know it, it's it's you want to look good in terms of your face, and you don't want to age, you know, and you want to be handsome.
I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. It's, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. And no, so, no, definitely. <laughs> It's uh, it, so it's kind of interesting too. Like you know, I came I I came across you again the second time. Like when I thought, oh, I should I should interview you was I was actually looking for an image consultant, and so I made this big spreadsheet and I and I found some people and I and I found that you, I actually sent a request out to to you, but your assistant said that you don't do the in person consulting anymore, which I totally understand. I mean, you're yeah. you're super busy with everything going on, but but that I think that's kind of interesting because it it occurred to me I was like realizing I was like I need to step things up to the next level. You know, some of my YouTube videos, I've got a tank top and a backwards hat. And, you yeah. know, that's what, well, well, I think that might be kind of cool. It's not really projecting the image of success that I, I'd like to pr project. So what do you yeah, think no. about that? Like just the idea of, you know, how should guys be more concerned about this and, and be thinking about these things and possibly hire image consultants to do, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. I, and, and what I tell people is, you know, what you wear and the way that you groom yourself and, and what you're presenting to the outside world, it's your brand. Every brand has has an image and you have a perception about a brand. You know, it's like a Holiday Inn is a hotel and so is a Ritz Carlton, but they're different and we think of them differently. They both serve the exact same purpose, but one we see as luxurious, high end and can charge a higher premium, the other one basically just gets the job done. And, and people are no different. We all have a brand and what we dress like, what we present, how we communicate, verbal, nonverbal communication, all these things basically paint the picture or the brand that is us to the outside world. And so it is, it is deadly critical. The other thing is that with social media, with the world in which we live now, it is getting so incredibly competitive. Yeah. You're, you're, you're competing for, for eyeballs, you're competing for attention, you're competing for dollars, for women, for, for, for relationships, for success, and everybody's trying to come and get it. And, and, and the people I feel that are going to be more successful are the people that put in a little bit of effort, a little bit of time in taking care of themselves and understand the importance of presenting themselves in uh, respectable and, and the best light possible. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's I I've talked about this a lot, but the, we're we're moving from like you know Pareto's law, the eighty twenty principle, which really becoming the the ten ninety. And, and like you said, it's like like ten percent of people are getting ninety percent of the of the results or ninety percent of the market. Like you've got to be in the top, you know, for the for guys like. 5% of the guys are getting 95% of the chicks, right? That's, that's the thing. And like not understanding that I think is a, is a big, pr because, because like you said, I think it has a lot to do with social media and communication and the fact that because messages spread so fast, that effect gets multiplied so much. And so those little things make more of a difference, I think. Absolutely. Like, like, and, and just the simple fact, like you, you know, in some of your videos, you're wearing just like a tank top or a plain t-shirt backwards hat. And like what you're wearing right now with a, a nice fitted black, simple you know polo shirt it, it just sends a different message and yeah. and it's such a it's, it's such a strong statement and you know you look great you know it shows that you work out but it's not too tight and so it doesn't look like you're showing off you just look like you're you know put together incredibly well and that is going to be very different than a lot of people out there doing the exact same thing you are two people same thing, go in for like a job interview, approach a woman, one person pays attention to style, they're grooming, maybe their clothes are clean, they're put together, they fit well. The other person doesn't. 100% of the time, the guy who put in the effort gets the girl, gets the job, and, and wins, basically. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, so, so what do you think is, what would you say is the most important thing like for, for the guys that are listening out here? Obviously, a lot of my audience is, is software developers, programmers, not, not so much now, now that it's actually expanded, but, but definitely in the technology. Not a, a, a group of people not known for their style. <laughs> right, exactly. So what, what are the best thing, like what's the biggest bang for their buck that they could do? You know, maybe they don't want to, you know, they don't want to like do this whole overhaul and, and makeover, sure. but, but you know, what are the, the, the best bang for the buck things? The best bang for your buck is, is always going to be get a better fitting pair of jeans. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's one of the things like developers are, are known for sort of dressing super casual and it's, it's acceptable. Well, you can still dress casually and comfortably without looking sloppy. 
and it's it's all about fit. So invest in some clothes that fit you a little bit better. Instead of that ratty concert t-shirt, maybe get something that's a little bit nicer. Maybe go with something like a pocket tee or um, you know a nice V-neck, something simple and clean. In terms of shoes, you know, shoes matter. Um, you know, flip-flops might be okay for the beach, but maybe they're not appropriate for the office. Instead, maybe opt for like a pair of driving moccasins, boat shoes, cool pair of like Adidas fashion sneakers. There are ways to still be casual, cool without being sloppy. And I would say just invest in the basics, make sure that they fit flawlessly and, and you'll be better than 99% of other developers out there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, it's funny, I, I, I do a lot of videos, and I actually want to get your opinion on this too, uh, because, uh, but, but I do a lot of videos where I'm telling guys that, you know, that the looks don't matter as much for guys, it's, it's more of the confidence, it's like that that can overcome it a lot more than, than the looks, but they do matter. I mean, you, you should use every advantage, every edge that you have, uh, but but I, I think it's, it's, it's interesting that, well, you know, when I talk to a lot of, of women about it, the one thing that they say that, you know, I usually say like, don't necessarily take what women say, like they're looking for in a guy, because it might not match up with what really, you know, uh, <laughs> but, uh, which I'd, I'd like your take on that too. But, uh, but one thing that they do say that I do believe is that every woman likes a well-dressed man, right? And I fact I kind of had to have this pounded into my head, but that, that seems to be like, it, like you can overcome a lot of maybe your physical or your face or, or some of the other things Absolutely, because, if, you're, if you're well dressed, right? Well, here's the other thing. And clothing has the ability to transform somebody's appearance. Like you might have a big belly or a big butt or, you know, you're, 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 you're oddly proportioned, but clothing has the amazing ability to almost be like style smoke and mirrors. You can minimize by choosing the appropriate or, or clothing that is going to basically you know, enhance your positive attributes, minimize your perceived negative attributes. You can do a lot with clothing. And so, you know, it, it, it's, I don't know, I, I sort of went off on that tangent, but, uh, but yeah, you know, being a well-dressed man is, 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 I think it's important. I don't think it's ultimately the end all be all. I think you can overcome a lot of things, but if you're dressed like shit, part of my language, you're yeah. going to have to work twice as hard to prove that you deserve a shot. And that's something where, you know, it, it, it's about image. In the first five seconds of meeting somebody, we're forming opinions. It's not a, a conscious thing. It's not a, hey, I don't like, you know, blonde hair. And so I don't like this person. It, it's all subconscious. And if you have an image that is not representative of the way that you want to be presented or received by the rest of the world, you've got to work twice as hard to prove that you're worth giving the client or getting the job, um, you know, getting the girl, getting a kiss at the end of the night. I mean, in the first five seconds, that decision has been made yeah. for the most part. And so, you know, you're welcome to dress like shit, but at the, the end of the day, you know, can you really afford to? And, and it doesn't take that much time or effort, honestly, to just step it up a little bit. Yeah, that makes a t total sense. And that's the one thing. I mean, it takes a long time to build muscles in the gym or to lose weight or to even fix your face if you've got bad skin or, or you know. <laughs> you yeah, know, fix it, your it, face. There are some things that aren't going to fix my face, John. <laughs> <laughs> but the dressing you could do, right? You could you just Absolutely. Gotta spend some money and, and maybe invest the time. Or, or you know, for me, it was like I used, I used to do modeling way back in the day, but I wasn't up with the latest trends. So I was like, oh, I'll just hire a professional to help me. Okay. Oh, Okay, now I feel good. Now I, I got the, they gave me some information. So I have some wisdom and knowledge as well as, as helped me to get the, the clothes that I need. But absolutely. And that's the yeah. other thing is if, if for most guys, they, it feels a little bit weird. They might not, if you haven't paid attention to style, you know, going into a store and being like, okay, go ahead, go, yeah. you know, pick stylish clothes. It's not that easy. What I recommend for guys, if you're looking for a little help, look at the mannequins. Yeah. Every store has outfits put together, and these are professionals that put those together. Um, shop in stores that are going to typically be pretty timeless or classic or in style. Like, you're going to have a tough time. If you, as a guy, go into Banana Republic, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty tough to screw it up. Like, yeah. okay, you know, and also they all have great sales associates. So if you're looking for that great pair of jeans, go to The Gap. And they've got 17 different styles, you know, let the, the associate help you, let them help you, um, you know, pick 
you know, a, a pair that, that fits great. Or another thing that I say, if you've got a stylish friend, ask them to go shopping with you, you know, just have the confidence. They would love to do it because, you know, it's a saying to them, you know, Hey, I think you're stylish, but I, I almost attribute it sort of like, like working out. It's like a style spot. You know, sometimes yeah. when, you, when you're going for that heavier weight, you need a little assistance just in case you screw it up. Style is the same thing. Ask a friend, a family member, a loved one. The problem with asking your wife or girlfriend or loved one is, or boyfriend, whatever you're into, is that they don't want to hurt your feelings. Right. It's, it's better to have that third party perspective. And that's why you would hire a professional like an image consultant, because they don't have to sit next to you at Christmas dinner. They can be <laughs> like, hey, those pants fit like shit. Use these or change this or do this. This looks great on you. And so that's why it's beneficial to go outside of your current pool of social friends and, and uh, resources to step up your game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. In fact, on the, on the, on the flip side too, I mean, even, even if someone doesn't want to hurt your feelings, the other thing they could be, be they might be jealous or they might be like, that like your girlfriend doesn't want you to necessarily look good. I mean, to some degree she does, but to some degree she doesn't, right? <laughs> that's or what, that's, what, your best that's what every guy says. That <laughs> Guys use that as an excuse. Let me tell you something. When I t talk to women, uh -huh. I say to them, I say, you know, what's the most important accessory you've got? It's not your bag. It's not your shoes. It's the guy whose arm you're holding on when you walk into a room or a party. And I mean, and that a lot of times is like, oh, wait, you know what? You're right. Um, and a lot of times women have absolutely no clue as to what you should be wearing as a guy. They are right. so busy and focused on themselves because women's style change so much faster than men's. And they're like, they don't care about you and your style. They're just like, put this on. Or they'll look to their friends, husbands, boyfriends to say, okay, well, he's wearing that. So I'll just get you that if they go shopping for you. And ultimately it's like the style blind leading the style blind. And so <laughs> I say, you know, we are men, we are resourceful. We can figure it out for ourselves and, and dressing ourselves is is something that we need to learn to do. If you're not great yeah. at it, it's okay, but that's not an excuse not to make uh, moves and, and strides to actually improving yourself. Yeah, yeah, it may, it may, it, I think it does make a large difference. And I had to overcome like a price tag thing because I realized as I went, you know, as I, I went with an in-person consult with 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 uh, with someone, an uh, image consultant, and you know, I finally got actually jeans. I, I think it was like seven for the world. Is that a call, what it's called? Seven mankind. So yeah, same for mankind. That's yeah. what it was. And I was like, whoa, these are stretchy. And, you know, I'm a I'm a weightlifter. And I'm a pretty big yeah. guy. And like I could never get jeans. And then, you know, she knew it, and instantly. She's like, oh, these are the ones for you. And it was like, wow, I actually have jeans where I don't have a sag ass, right? And and they yep. actually fit. And so, you know, but they were hefty on the price tag. But then yeah. the same thing, we went into Nordstrom's or, you know, even those stores. And it was like, okay, I've never bought a $200 shirt before. But you know, when you put on a two hundred dollars shirt, it looks good. Not that you, that everything has to be super expensive, yeah. but there was. I was like, wow, I need to. Like, it's worth investing, paying paying maybe twice the price. At least it, it, it seemed to me. I didn't realize that clothes could fit this well, or that the, those little things could look so much better. And you can tell. I mean, it to me to the when you at first I was like, oh, this, this forty dollar or twenty dollar polo looks exactly like this hundred and fifty dollar polo, but when you no, put it, it on. <laughs> yeah, and 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 right. you know what? It, it's it's something where there's sort of like a, a balancing act that you need to do. Like certain, yeah. I would say, you know, certain items, and there's like certain price points. Cer certain stores just cross the line. Like yeah, um, you know, like Diesel. Um, you know, actually, Diesel is a bad example, but like a lot of these things and places, you know, it's like okay, yes, the twenty dollars shirt is going to be very different than the hundred dollars shirt. But the hundred dollar shirt isn't necessarily that much different than the four hundred dollar shirt, and right. so it's you know it's you really just got to figure out where your sweet spot is and what you're comfortable with. And the funny thing is that you know the first time you spend say a hundred dollars on a pair of jeans when you're used to paying thirty, it's like oh my gosh I can't believe I spent you know a hundred dollars on these jeans. But then it's like wait a second. These are great. And then the next time you go, it's like, well, these are $100 or $120. It's like, okay, let me get those, you know? And, and so your, your, it's almost like your tolerance changes yeah. as you start to experience that sometimes you do get what you pay for. And, and it's something that you just need to experience for yourself.
Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was totally what happened to me. I felt I felt like the blackjack table where you up it and then you're like, "No, nah, I can't go down to $5 now. I've I've been playing 100." <laughs> <laughs> it was the same same kind of thing. But but I I my tolerance went up. Now I was like, "Okay, because I realized that the value I was getting <clears throat> like, you know, yes, I'm spending more money, but I'm I'm getting something that actually like every single thing that I'm wearing is is fitting well. I'm I'm feeling, you know, good about it. And I, you know, to me it's like, "Well, that that was I wish I would have known this." You know, it, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Where have you been my whole life? <laughs> exactly. Expensive polo shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so, so back to that question uh, that I was talking about, I, I want to get your opinion on what do you think is the, you know, I, I've been giving advice definitely to guys and, and they still, no matter how much I say this, you know, and, and, you know, if you differ with me, that's, that's totally cool. Cause I'd like to hear your okay. side of it, but I, no matter how much I it? say that, that looks don't matter as much, like, you know, I always say like, for, for guys looks matter a lot for girls, right? You know, but, but the other way it's, it's the confidence. It's the other attributes that are so much more important. I mean, do what you can obviously with what you got, but, but developing the confidence to, to me is, is what I've, I've been confident been and I, I agree with you a thousand percent confidence, confidence, confidence. If you meet a confident guy like their confidence is, is, is the most attractive trait, regardless mm -hmm. of if you look like, you know, like David Beckham or, you know, it, it, if you're, if you're a timid, weak person and you just don't, you know, basically command the, the attention, the respect, when you've got somebody who's got confidence, when he enters a room, he's got presence. And this is the most attractive characteristic that a guy could possibly possess more than looks more than six pack abs more than tons of money now you know tons of money sometimes you know helps with confidence but at the end of the day it's it's you know the guy that is confident and understands who he is and understands the value that he's bringing to the world and who he is and he doesn't have to showboat or act like he's something is is going to always i mean you've got an advantage over the guy with six pack abs that you see flexing on Instagram. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. We're on the same page here. So, so you guys that like, they, cause a lot of times they, I get the arguments like, well, you, you can say that if, if you look good, right, you're in shape, you got six pack abs, but, but the, but the reality is I didn't always have six pack abs and, and, <laughs> and, and, and I know it's yeah. take care of yourself. You know, right. it, it's like, I recently did a video talking about five things that guys think that women care about, but they don't. And it's, you don't need a sports car, but you do need to have reliable transportation. That is attractive, right. you know, and you don't need, you don't need six pack abs. Um, but, you know, just take care of yourself. And, and honestly, you know, from, from what I understand, a lot of women that I, that I've talked to and, and my wife's friends, you know, they say that when they see a guy who's, he's super in shape, super, you know, super fit, it's a, a little bit intimidating and B, it's almost a turn off because they assume that they're going to be very vain and egocentric and, and always worried about themselves as opposed to the guy with the dad bod that is, is, is very into and attentive to the woman. And so you just got to find, find, find what works for you. But confidence ultimately is going to set you apart from 95% of other dudes out there. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? There's this movie. It's like in the eighties. I forgot. It was called the towel of Steve. You ever seen that? Yes, I, I don't remember it, but I remember the, the towel of Steve. I do. It was it with uh, Steve Carell. No, it was with. I, anyway, I can't, I can't I remember, remember who, but he had like, I mean, he was this overweight kind of fat, like in he was a bum and all this stuff, but he was like super popular in high school and he still had it. <laughs> Cause he was so confident and so chill. Like he was picking up these girls. It's like, and he had this crazy <laughs> amount of, of women. And you're like, you look at this guy and you're like, what the hell? You know, just, he, he hardly has a job. He's got, you know, he's got everything in his life going wrong for him. He smokes pot all the time, but he just <laughs> has a so supreme confidence that he just like, it, it's, it's magic almost, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. So, okay. So, so cool. So that's, uh, I, I think, you know, ho hopefully guys will, will get that, that, that message that, that it is, it is the confidence that, that makes so much of a difference. And then also in, in just the confidence, I think really with, with approaching, I think, well, well here, actually here's one that I, w I really would love to, to get your take on or, or just to, you know, dispel this belief. I get tons of comments on YouTube videos when I do these videos, they're like, especially programmers, right? Cause they make money. So they're like, right. here's my plan. I'm going to make a shit ton of money. Okay, and then I will have the chicks after I make this shit ton of money. 
And, you know, knowing a few guys in the, the artists, their social dynamics, PUA scene, I know that a lot of their clients are really, really rich guys who are having trouble. So yeah, I say this all the time, but. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, you know, in theory, that sounds great. <laughs> but in reality, <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're, if you're scared to approach somebody or you're not, you know, you don't feel good about yourself. I mean, you know, you can try and cover that up by buying a lot of expensive things, but at the end of the day, they're the guys that are going to seek help with the pickup artists and community. And, and um, yeah, no, I agree hundred percent. You've got to develop that, that confidence. You've got to be comfortable in your own skin, um, regardless of how much money you have or make. Right. Right. And, and another, another one, just to test this out. I, I, I like to ask some bold questions. I don't know what the answer will be, but uh, you're a good looking guy, obviously. Right. So, well, I don't, you don't have to answer that, but, but you are. So, <laughs> well, it's about time somebody noticed. <laughs> yes. Cause, cause I wanted okay. to spell this one too. Unless, unless it's, I mean, again, feel free to contradict me if, if I'm okay. wrong here, but do <laughs> women just come up to you? I mean, you know, occasionally sure, but, but I, th these guys, you know, I swear, I swear they have this impression and, and I keep on saying it. I just, you know, again, if you disagree, it's totally cool. But, okay. but I keep on saying, no, it doesn't matter how good looking you are. You just, it's not going to be the same. It's not women are, you're going to have to go out and, and do it because they're no. not going to come up to you. I mean, how no, often no, no. does it actually happen that women come up to you, you know, and, and you're well, definitely a good looking guy. Like, the, like I, I'm, you know, it, women never come up to me. I think it's also, um, you know, it, it's just not something where I'm also not in the environment. I don't go out to clubs right. and stuff like that. And so, you know, I don't know what the protocol is for, you know, hitting on people at Starbucks, but no, it, it's, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, I might, you know, occasionally have somebody come up to me, but it's not necessarily the quality or caliber of woman that I would be interested in if I wasn't right. married. And right. so, you know, yeah, you might have the occasional will to be stroll up and <laughs> try and you know talk to you but no i mean it it doesn't it doesn't it's doesn't matter how you know it just doesn't it, it doesn't work that way yeah cool okay yeah I just everybody's in the same awkward boat of having to actually go talk to people yeah. that is the that is the fact and you know and and a lot of the the most beautiful women will actually tell you that they don't get approached they don't nobody comes up to them and 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 the funny thing is that you know, you'll see a very attractive woman with a less than, you know, attractive guy. And you're like, how did he get her? The, the truth is that he had the confidence to go up to her and ask. Yeah. And that was it. You know, he's not rolling in, in, you know, a Bentley. It's he just simply had the confidence to go up and engage. And that's that. that yeah, totally, totally agree with you. So, so tell me a little bit about the background behind the, the, the your name, the Alpha M. I, I love, I love it, I, and and I mean, you've done amazing on on YouTube. I think you've got what two point five million subscribers, or or something six. like that. Oh, two point six million. Oh, two point uh, six. Okay. <laughs> Come on, John. No, I'm kidding. And but you're yeah, not. Yeah. And you're, you're so humble. But, no, just... Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Um, no, it's uh, the the name was by accident. It wasn't by accident. I in I had a fitness center years ago um it closed it i went bankrupt it was terrible i it was a horrible story and um i one thing that i that happened while i was at the 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 fitness center when i had that was i i started working with this guy steve who wanted to go out on a date but he didn't know what to wear and i was always pretty well dressed and so one day he asked me he's like hey would you help me actually you know, go shopping and find some stuff. I said, sure. But while we're at it, why don't I come over to your place and see what you have, see what you need. And then by the way, we need to go and get your nose hair trimmed and you need a haircut. And so I didn't realize it, but I was setting up the foundation for a business model. Right. When my fitness center closed, um, I was pretty much out of work. And um, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I want to try this image consulting thing. And so when I was coming up with the name, I was thinking, I'm like, okay, I want something that says male without being too like in your face, like king of the jungle consulting. And so, you know, alpha male seemed like it was a little bit too like, of course. And right. um, I just said, I, alpha M, alpha M, it's sort of, and, and it's sort of just stuck. And, and um, that was, that was, that was it. it. It's funny though, because with YouTube, 
everybody thinks that I'm like proclaiming that like I'm the alpha male among all alpha men. And I'm a, I'm a little dude. I'm like five, six and a half, 150 pounds. And I, I don't have the deepest voice. And I talk about stuff like manscaping and powdering your balls. And so, you know, and so, so people are always like, you know, you're not alpha, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, it's, it was sort of like kind of tongue in cheek, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's uh it's definitely it's definitely worked yeah oh it's <laughs> so, a good name i really like yeah. it I, I do like the subtlety of it because like uh, i think you're right like alpha male is too much in your face but alpha yeah. m it sort of suggests like i think when people see that they're like does that stand for alpha male i think it does bob <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly know, they, they kind of have that so, but but it so it doesn't put them off as much but your videos are just awesome by the way like i mean i i get sucked in on, on your videos uh, I'll, I'll plug you know definitely let's put a link up here for uh for aaron's youtube channel i mean if you aren't if you aren't already subscribed probably you are <laughs> right but uh but if you aren't go check it out and check out his videos like I, I catch myself like every time i have one of those questions i'm like i i just do the site search on your youtube channel i'm like oh yeah, yeah he's covered that like i just he's saw your one it. on tank tops and i was like yeah i'm definitely violating the tank top thing bad <laughs> need to fix that and I was like, oh, some of it's just some of, some of it is just a an observation or opinion but uh don't take what i say too seriously it's just one one uh loud mouth italian's um opinion so <laughs> which is me and so it's good though no it's, it's really good advice and i like how it's, you've got the you know the, the very pretty short tips and and it's very it's very john i'm, ta I'm taking you with me over to my plug for my we're going to change locations because uh my my I just got notification that my battery is about to croak. See how well oh, okay. I plan this stuff? Hey. All right. Man. Anyway. But uh, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll just talk about your, your videos then while you're doing that. But yeah, they are really, really have been been helpful. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. I found stuff that helped me on facial hair, right, in, in the, the definitive. Um, I still have to – I'm working on hairstyle now. I've actually got to – got to got to figure this piece out but um but yeah i like it a little longer on top oh yeah take it tight on the sides you'll it'll look great yeah i'm gonna yeah i was i was going real short before i'm kind of militant military kind of but now i think i'm gonna grow out the the length and, and get it really better styled but i like it i like it Cool. So um, one, oh, you know what I wanted to talk about too is the whole Shark Tank thing because the, the first time you're on Shark, like I was sitting there watching it, right? And I sell info products. That's I mean, that's how Simple Programmer makes most of the business. So a lot of people that, that come here through YouTube, they'll end up going on my email list. You know, I do email marketing. Sure. So so we're, we're in the same, you know, we're, we're kin. And, and that, you know, I, I immediately recognize what you're doing on Shark Tank. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they don't get it. They totally don't get it. it, it it's so fun. It's so funny because everybody in, in this world, in this space, yeah. understands that what a $300, you know, info product, that's crazy. Now, where I went wrong was I had like DVDs and the physical. This was a few years ago, and I am definitely not the most tech savvy individual. Um, but, but yeah, it was, you know, it was the sharks are, are business people. They understand, yeah. you know, making a product, you know, having a margin, selling it. But the info world is a totally different animal. And um, it's incredibly lucrative, and and um, you know the profit margins. It doesn't get any better, honestly. And so, yeah, they didn't get it, um, but it was uh, it was still a lot of fun. Yeah, I was sitting there. I was like, I was getting ready to jump on my seat. I was like, I will give you money. I will give you money now. <laughs> you know, but but I knew that. Like, but then I'm also thinking, like, I know the profit margins. He doesn't really need money. <laughs> He's here yeah. for for the exposure. He's here for the the you know to to get the advice from one of these yeah. don't tell anybody my secret <laughs> or wait i already told you my secret yes that is absolutely accurate yeah but uh but yeah it was it was awesome it was really incredible that's cool yeah i mean that's that's awesome just that you're able to do that and then you came back this the second time right but this that was with the the hair one that you yeah that pete you and just, pedro yeah pete, the hair, yeah i i am not see i tried the info product route for a while and it yeah. just didn't feel right for me i I'm not a writer I, in terms of I don't like sitting there at a computer and just banging out products and email lists. And, and so 
for me, I decided to sort of go and monetize a different route through actual physical products. And, yeah. and my first physical product was like, I've tried like accessories and, and I used to sit there and string bracelets. And that was like, this is insane. I'm sitting here <laughs> for $20. I'm sitting here making a bracelet for, but, but I tried yeah. it. Um, I tried yeah. apparel. Um, and then I ultimately ended up trying um, hair product and that was very successful. And then, um, and then it, it fit with my audience. And so yeah, that's how sort of T. Hanley came to be as well. It was like, okay, you know, the Pete and Pedro thing is good, but I'm never going to have that on the shelves of, 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 you know, Sephora or, or the grocery store. It's, it's a product that a YouTuber sells. Um, it does well on Amazon, but Tiege Hanley is a little bit different in terms of, I really think that that model is much larger and is much more scalable than, than my, my hair product company. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense too. just, just because it, it's, it's an untapped, you know, there's no one offering this solution. The, the best right. thing I could find was like Jack and black, but it's not, there's no instruction. There's no, right. You know, it's like, you, yeah. what you're, and they have, they doing. honestly, they have like 120 products in their catalog yeah yeah it's so confusing oh, <laughs> it's like what so good yeah products though jack black makes good products keels yeah. makes decent products um um who else clinique makes decent products um you know but but i i think our stuff honestly because i know what's in them are are better than than everything that's out there so it's cool that's cool. Yeah, I've always thought someday I'll. Well, the only I do sell one physical product, which is a simple programmer T-shirt. But and it, and it's kind of there's there's almost a different feeling, like you know, when you're shipping something physical to people. That I I kind of want to do more of that because it it just you know the info products are great and and there's huge profit margins, but. But I, I do like I'm launching a new book and, and that'll be a phys, uh, self-publishing the book this time. And then so that'll be a nice physical product. Sure. Just, I don't know. There's something about that 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 just is is, is it is. It's very satisfying now. But but there's there's definitely some logistical challenges and shipping is a is a world in and of itself. And yeah. it's 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 expensive to ship things. And so. You know, it, it takes, there's definitely a learning curve that we're still literally, I, I started Pete and Pedro back in 2013 and I'm still, you know, having, you know, tweaking and pulling levers and trying to figure it out because, you know, tracking and, and shipping internationally is difficult, but they're, they're, it, it's, it's, it can, it can work. <laughs> you just yeah. need to be patient and, and have some, somebody show you the ropes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not super excited about trying to <laughs> get into that right now. I've still got some ways to go, I think on, on the, on the info product and, and some, some things there, but, but eventually cool. I, I'd like to like to do something like that. I got to tell you though, your, your lead magnet on your site is really good. It got me today. I was like, I, I was going, I was like, Oh, let me go check out and see what's the, hair pro the uh, hairstyle. Yeah. It was hairstyle and facial hair. And I was like, yeah. Oh, I, I'm like, I'm putting my email address in right now. And then I downloaded and it was a really high quality lead magnet. So that was, that was cool. And yeah. And, and, uh, it's funny because it, it drives info marketers crazy when, when they know that I've got this really, you know, engaged, robust email list and I'm not selling things on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, it, like it, you know, it's, um, I don't utilize it the same way. Like most people utilize lists and, um, yeah, that was another learning curve for me. Just the, the fact that it's really expensive to, you know, have a lot of email addresses and, um, yeah. Do you use Infusionsoft? I'm not. I'm using Drip I'm right now. Okay. okay. I use like MailChimp and Aweber. I started on Aweber and then I went MailChimp. And but I mean, it's it's just it's expensive. Who who would have thought that having a bunch of you know emails is is you know a lot of money per month to be able to actually send them stuff? So. Oh yeah. Another yeah, learning curve. Yeah, it's insane. Like I, my bill keeps going up. I've got maybe about seventy thousand subscribers now, and that's yep. that's not. I, I imagine you have a lot more than that. But my, I think my bill is like it's like seven or eight hundred bucks a month just to just to keep the lights on, right? That's like yeah. insane. But it it's, is, and then they get you business. because it's like then it's like 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 one thousand like people increments. It, it, it's it's insane. That that's the business to be in. We're in the wrong business, John. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, my, my friend is actually one of my friends started the drip and they got acquired oh, by really? the ages and, and they, they did pretty well on that. You know, I, I do think did that they? it's ready for disruption, though. I think that if someone can come up with a, a solution that you can implement yourself and run on your own servers, that works really yeah. well. It could, uh, you know, because these are some pretty hefty price tag. But it's, it, it's the thing, as an info marketer, it's your business is your email list, right? It's like sure. that's the, so I, I'm like, well, yeah, this is real damn expensive. But, I, you know, if, if you if you burned everything else in my business and left me with nothing, said I can only pick one thing, I'll take the email list, please. <laughs> yep, exactly. I, I get it. Cool. So, um, so what? Uh, so, be so, so what? Besides the teach Hanley, what? What do you got? What's your plans as far as like? Are you expanding more on the YouTube? You know, I imagine you're probably not crying like a, a lot of the YouTubers are crying about the the monetization hit, uh, because that's. No. <laughs> I don't think you, they, you your AdSense revenue is how you make money. No, I don't. I mean, I make you know the AdSense revenue. You know, I I make some money on that, um, but it really wasn't affected by it because my, my, my content isn't very controversial and, and they haven't demonetized talking about manscaping yet. So, um, so I'm pretty good there. <laughs> exactly. That's still okay. Apparently. Okay. Um, but no, it, and I do, uh, I have an advertising agency called menfluential media and, okay. um, and that was started because, um, it's basically me, my best friend. And then I brought my other friend, Antonio Centeno, who's a content creator as well. Um, and, and basically it was one of those things where I was getting approached by so many companies wanting me to talk about their products because the smartest thing I ever did was go into the men's lifestyle space. I had no idea what, what I was doing at the time, but when I first started, it was just about style. And then I'm like, well, let me talk about grooming. Well, since I'm talking about grooming, let me talk about, you know, relationships and, you know, and etiquette and, and pretty much anything now that, that has to do with something you know, in a man's life, I, I'll talk about. And so, yeah. um, so I was, a, I, I get approached by, by a tremendous amount of brands wanting me to advertise their products. And so I was so frustrated with it because the thing that I love doing is making videos. The thing I hate doing is negotiating deals yeah. and trying to do that yep. function of, of what I do. And so Two years ago, I was at my family reunion. My, my buddy would always come down, my best friend from high school, Terry. And, and we were talking, he was in car sales. He was in upper management at these different dealer groups and he was just burnt out. Um, you know, it's funny because he was the first friend of mine that made six figures. He, was, he dropped out of college, he was like 20 years old. He was really, he's an incredible salesperson and he was killing it back yeah. in the day. And so it, it's, it's, it's just this, it's seductive because you make a lot of money given, you know, the amount of effort, but you have to put in a lot of time. And so he was burnt out and he recently left his job. He wasn't sure what he wanted to do. And we were talking and I said, you know, how would you think about, what would you think about trying to sell me and, and, and advertising? And so, um, we, tr we, we tried it. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll pay you $5,000 each month for three months, three months. And yeah. if it works at the end of the three months, if, if it's not working, you know, we'll, we'll leave friends. And, um, it was the second best decision I ever made <laughs> because, um, you know, it, it's just been like, it's been incredible because one, I don't have to do that, that function. I, I, I took work off my plate and, yeah. and he handles everything. He negotiates everything, you know, everything just goes to him and he just brings me deals basically. Hey, do you like this? Do you not like this? And, and I get to say yes, no. And, and it's just, it's incredible. And so that's how I make the, that's, the most profitable thing that I do. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense, and that's great to have someone. I I just recently I have a business partner that just made partner had a similar kind of deal, and he's an excellent copywriter. And yeah. like it made so we launched one of my product or relaunch a product, and we made so much on it. I was like, okay, I will pay you, and I, I paid a retainer, and then and if it works out, and it was the same thing. It was like such a it, like making oh, yeah. those decisions where you so somewhere where you're weak at and someone else is strong for your business and getting that off your plate so you can do the thing that you're awesome at. Gosh, such a, such a big difference. It was, it was, I'm telling you, it was, it was one of the hardest things. I'm also a control freak. Mm -hmm. And so being able to sort of relinquish control to something that important was, was, uh, 
was uncomfortable. But as soon as it sort of happened, and, and that's the other thing, when you get people that are around you and that are part of your business or organization that just get shit done and understand, you don't have to micromanage them. You don't, yeah. They do what they're great at, you do what you're great at, and that's how you really ultimately can be successful. And so, you know, it, it's something that I would highly recommend. But, but that being said, there, there are some people that think they want to put the cart before the horse and they, before they are successful and ready for that, they try to just get this team around them. And, yeah. and you know, it's like, wait a second, <laughs> you don't need that. You don't need that yet. And, um, and, and so, you know, it's just a function of the, the, the speed bumps that you, you, you hit as, as you go on your entrepreneurial journey. And so, yeah. Yeah, That's I found funny. you can't you can't mop the you can't hire someone to mop the floor until you mop the floor and scrub the toilets first, right? It's like then then you can do it, but you can't just exactly. outsource that. Exactly. exactly. So uh, actually one thing one thing that actually changed my business mindset a lot was I read a book called uh, The E Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. I don't know if you've if you if you've seen that book or heard of it. I'm not but uh, a real good book, but I mean, you're obviously already doing it, but uh, I always like to ask, I'm a big avid reader. I always like to ask a couple of books that you recommend. <laughs> that you, think you, you know, what's going to be really funny about this in retrospect, I'm going to post the video tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What on YouTube, watch it. Um, it's, it's something that I, uh, okay. So you want to talk about books. It's something that, okay. So I, I'm all uncomfortable right now because I actually don't, I'm not a reader. Okay. Um, I, I don't read. I, I can read, but I'm not like, I'm not somebody in this space that we're in. You know, everybody that you talk to is, is super into just, just content and, and getting as much information as possible. And reading is, is part of that process. For me, I do not consume content that way. I've never really liked reading. Um, it's, I think it stems from when I grew up, I, I went to this like hippie school that taught me how to spell on this, based on this like phonics system. And so I had a very tough time all my life spelling grammar because I didn't want to read. It was, it was terrible. And so it's actually something that I'm insecure about because I know that I, or I feel like I should like to read, but, but I don't. Um, I love Ted talks. I love consuming information. Right. Um, and I'm not an uneducated person, but I am not a reader. I learn everything the hard way. And so it's something recently that, that I used to try and lie in podcasts and, and okay. come up with <laughs> books, but now I'm like, eh, I'll just be honest. Um, but one book that I do have, somebody gave me that I have watched the Ted talk that I absolutely love is, um, it's by Simon Sinek called start with why. Oh yeah. Yep. And I saw the Ted talk first. I'm real big into Ted talks. Whenever I, I'm doing cardio. I watch TED Talks. And so that was something that was one that was sort of that that aha moment, that that pivotal point in my in my life that it was like, wow, that really makes sense. And okay. uh, and so that's that's a book that I would recommend that I haven't read. OK. Oh, no, I appreciate the honesty. Actually, so you guys out there see how vulnerability is in shows confidence, because if you're willing to come out and say something that may be embarrassing to you, it shows <laughs> you have to have a lot of confidence to do that. So I think that's watch that's, the video tomorrow. You're going to find the irony in this conversation that we're having right now. Oh, I'm, OK. I'm <laughs> totally watching it. I'm totally watching it. So for, for everyone watching this video, it'll probably have come out a couple weeks ago, but I'll be watching it okay. tomorrow. OK, good, 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 good. good. <laughs> but uh, cool. So what's it called for the for those people so they can search? It's for called it? I Feel Stupid. I Feel Stupid. Okay, perfect. All right, that's stupid. easy to find. You search I Feel Stupid on YouTube. <laughs> that's it, and you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you have cool. so much YouTube juice, it should. So, Okay, so uh, r real quick then, since we're wrapping up, want to give you the chance to, to plug what whatever you want, you know, for Guys, I, I, thank you. Can, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're all I would like to plug is my YouTube channel. Come check me out at Alpha M. Uh, search it in YouTube. You'll find me. And and uh, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, and then you'll be able to find all my other stuff through that. And so that's pretty much it. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Again, you are you are the Alpha M. You are the, the man. <laughs> I, I, I was so excited when that, you, when that doesn't read. Oh, but uh, you'll 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 get a kick out of tomorrow's video. I promise. 
Okay, okay. But yeah, I was I was I just had to say I was super excited when you responded back and said that you would do this interview. And and even more so, like I I was I was like when you said that you're watching my videos, binge watching my videos, because I was like, yeah. man, that is a compliment coming from a successful guy like you, especially on, on YouTube. So See, you know, that, that's you how I learn. That. I don't read. I watch better, you know, smarter guys on YouTube than I am. <laughs> John, thank you so much for this opportunity, man. And and send me a link to this and I'll make sure to share it. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Take care. All right, brother. Bye bye.